Hello everyone, my name is Adam Maripos Box and welcome to another OBS multi -pro or no, multi-platform or OBS Studio tutorial. This is a new version of OBS that is a lot more powerful and it's a it's really really cool. I've covered OBS multi-platform very extensively in other videos, so check out that playlist along with tons of helpful links in the description below. But in this video we're going to do a very quick run through of start to finish setting up a YouTube gaming live stream profile. Let's get started. So first and foremost, you will want to know your way around your YouTube live dashboard. That's at youtube.com slash live underscore dashboard. You can get to it from your video manager. Click live streaming. You do have to have it enabled from your channel. You may have to talk to your network if it's not enabled for you. Um, but it's pretty simple to set up. You literally just say, I agree and set it up and then know your way around this platform. So under profile here, we're going to go ahead and hit new profile, new and t call it YouTube gaming. That way we have a totally separate profile of our streaming settings for YouTube gaming for scene collection. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to scene collection, new and call it YouTube gaming. Now let's go ahead and open up settings. You can do so by clicking the settings button down here and then go to stream. And we're going to go under service. We're actually going to choose YouTube. Now pull up your YouTube live dashboard. You can get to this from your creator studio, from like your video manager, go to live streaming. And then down here under encoder setup, you may have to agree to the terms of live streaming. If you've never been here before, copy your stream name slash key here. Uh, you want to make sure that you never, ever, 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 ever show this to anyone. If you do, you will have to reset it and re-put that into your OBS because this is basically just a password to give anybody permission to stream to your channel. And you don't want that. So go ahead and paste that key in this box here, hit apply and hit OK. Now for the sakes of this tutorial, we're going to be doing a 720p 30 frames per second live stream to be most compatible with everyone's computers. However, if you have a really, really powerful computer, you can do 60 frames per second live stream as well. By default, you can do up to 1080p 30 or 60 frames per second live stream with YouTube gaming. But uh, I'll show you in the settings when you can change that. But for the purposes of this, we're just doing 30 frames per second at 720p. Next, jump down here to output. This is if you want a recording copy, a recorded copy of your live stream. Go ahead and change the format to MP4. Always do MP4. It is the most compatible with YouTube and video editor software and things like that. Always do YouTube. We're going to leave output mode at simple. And then for recording path, just tell it where to record. I have a specific hard drive and folder set up for OBS recordings. So I'm going to tell it to go there. You can pick your video folder or whatever. So when you're done streaming, your final recording will go in this folder that you choose. Next up are your bit rates. This is what you need to run a speed test for. Run the speed test and you'll see right here it says for me that I have a upload speed of 4.68 megabits per second. That's about 4.5 is what I'm going to estimate it as. So go over here to the OBS estimator. Again, link will be in the description below. You're going to need that bit rate and I'm going to put 4500 and then some specs about your computer, your processor, your graphics card, etc. I've put in my information here, put in your computer's information. You can find it on like the box of your computer or control panel, things like that. And then what you're actually what you're actually streaming in terms of size. We're doing a 720p stream here because it's a lot easier to stream 720p, especially on lower end like laptops and stuff. But you could even do a 480p stream because it would still look really good as long as you have a decent bit rate. And then click recommended settings. It's going to give you some advice of what you can set. It says set your FPS to 25. I don't really agree with that because 30 is the standard. So that's really what you need anyway. But then it's going to tell you right here. This is all you really need. It says you can do 720p or 1080p, and it says recommended bitrate, 3000. So I'm going to knock about 200 off of that because we're going to use a audio bitrate of either 128 or 160. Never really go below 128, um, but you don't really need above 256. Um, but we're going to use 160, so I'm going to really just put my bitrate at 2500 just to be safe. Because sometimes if something else is going in the background on my internet, you don't want it to cut your stream out because you're using up too much bandwidth. Once you've figured that out, hit apply and you're good to go on that end. Next up is your audio devices. This is going to be your game sound and your microphone. For sample rate, always have it at 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz. You should never use 22.05 unless you know exactly what you're doing. For channels, put it as stereo. 
just do it. For desktop audio device, in 90% of cases on Windows, default is going to work because whatever is set as default in Windows is going to play your game sound or your computer sounds, etc. If you know specifically that you're sending audio out to a specific separate device, then you can choose that, but there's no reason to. For the purposes of this tutorial, leave desktop audio device 2, microphone, and microphone 2 and 3 disabled. Uh, there is a more in-depth video you can go watch in the playlist that'll explain this, but essentially OBS has the ability to add multiple audio devices. So if you're setting up music or say like Skype or TeamSpeak, Skype or TeamSpeak can run through desktop device 2. And so let's say you have a headset that has two different outputs, one for chat, one for game. Then you can choose your game chat as desktop device and then your Skype chat as desktop device 2 and then balance it in the mixer down here, which we'll get to in a minute. But for most streams, you're just going to have game sound in your voice, so just leave that those three as disabled. Same thing with three microphones. In most cases, you're only going to have one microphone input you need to stream. Your microphone audio device is going to be a little bit different because the default may not be right for you. If I click it here, you'll see that I have a webcam. I have a line in. I have a microphone in, and then I have my USB interface for my professional grade microphone. If you have a USB microphone, such as a Snowball or a Blue Yeti, then it's actually going to say Blue Yeti. It may say microphone, but next to it will say like Blue Yeti or Blue Snowball. Choose that one. If you have a webcam, it should identify it as well. If you're using like a normal headset microphone with a 3.5 millimeter analog input, then it may just say microphone real tech high definition audio. If you don't know what you're using exactly, just pick some, you know, start picking some and doing trial and error. And if you see in the mixer down here, you have an audio level for your microphone as you're talking. So just keep picking different ones and talking into the microphone. And one of them should work if your microphone's hooked up correctly in your system. And you'll see audio, a little green audio bar bouncing around here. So mine's set up correctly. I'm going to put it at my line in USB audio device. And then you can enable push to mute or push to talk. Push to talk is pretty standard in like TeamSpeak and Ventrilo and stuff because you hold down a key in order for your microphone to be heard. So if you don't want your microphone always to be going in the stream for whatever reason, you can do that. That gets pretty problematic in a game, however. And so what you can actually do is instead do push to mute. So instead of having to hold down a key while you're playing a game to talk, you can instead only have to hold down a key when you're just, you know, needing to mute yourself for whatever reason. So if you're enabling those and no matter what, go ahead and hit apply. But if you're enabling those, go over here to hotkeys and set up some hotkeys for this. Now, all you literally have to do is click in the box and press the key that you want to use. And then if you put the same key for something like start and stop recording, then it'll toggle it. So you only have to hit plus to start recording and then plus again to stop recording. I go more in depth on the hotkeys in another video. However, if, you're, if you've used other software like this, you should be good to go. All right, lastly in the settings here, let's go to video. Render. For most people, Direct 3D or Direct X, it may say something, something direct, basically, should be the option you choose. That, that, that should be it. Uh, <laughs> for most people, that's pretty much all you should be using. It may not say 11, but it should be Direct 3D or Direct X. For video adapter, I only have one graphics card in my computer, so I can't actually show an example of this. But in computers with multiple graphics cards or computers with, or laptops, where it has Intel graphics and an NVIDIA graphics card or Intel graphics and dedicated AMD graphics card, you know, where your processor also does graphics, then you'll want to pick the either AMD or NVIDIA graphics if you have that available. Otherwise, it's going to cause a black screen for your games. However, if you're recording your desktop, you're going to want to choose the Intel option or the AMD option for your actual processor. It'll be like integrated graphics or Intel HD 3000 or something like that. The issue here is, is if you're using a laptop with dual graphics, then you're most likely not going to be able to record both your desktop and your games without getting a black screen because the computer actually uses the two different graphics cards for those two different devices. So that'll be something you'll have to keep in mind if you're on a laptop. And if you have trouble with it, check out the OBS support forums. Links will be in the description below to that. For your resolution here, this is what either your desktop is at or what your games are going to be at. In an ideal world, it's going to be 1920 by 1080. In a lot of cases, it's not going to be. If you click it here, it'll show you your monitor resolution options, most likely. I have three different monitors. I have a 1440p monitor, a 4K monitor, and a 1080p monitor. Choose the one that you're going to be streaming from. If you're unsure of your resolution, go over to your desktop, right click, and if you're on Windows 7 or 8, you can go to screen resolution. Instead of display settings here, it'll say screen resolution. On Windows 10, to see your screen resolution, right click the desktop, go to display settings, 
and then go to advanced display settings and it will show your resolution for your various monitors here. You just have to click a couple extra times. I'm actually for the sake of this video, I'm gonna use my 1440p monitor as my base resolution. So I'm gonna select the 2560 by 1440. For scaled resolution, since we're doing a 720p stream, we're doing 1280 by 720. And then you can choose your frame rate. Again, if you're a Twitch partner, you can use 60 frames per second. If you're not a Twitch partner, you have to use 30 frames per second. Also keep in mind that it requires a really powerful computer to do 60 frames per second as well. Now something to keep in mind, if you have a 4x3 aspect ratio monitor or a 16x9 aspect ratio monitor, that means your resolution is going to be something crazy like 1440x900 or 800x600 or 1280x1024, you know, something that's not 16x9 widescreen resolution, you're going to end up with some black bars issues. You can either tell your games to run at that 16x9 resolution, so for example on a 1440x900 monitor, you can actually tell the game to run at 1280x720, then you'll work out fine, um, but otherwise you're going to have black bars, and the, there's no way to fix that other than stretching it, and stretching it's going to make it look really distorted and ugly. That's just how it works. You don't have a widescreen monitor, so it's not going to look widescreen. There, there, there's no real getting around that, so keep that in mind. All right, now we're ready to tackle the bottom part of the screen here and actually set up your video, you know, your video inputs, and then you're good to go to start live streaming. So take a look at the interface here, and I go over everything in the interface more in depth in another video in the playlist. Um, but over here you have the audio mixer. This is how you're going to balance your microphone and your game audio, which we set up in the audio settings. You have two different volume meters here, which will show the active volume. And if I play a window sound real quick, you'll see the desktop one go up. There we go. And then my microphone's going up because I'm talking into it. Now, if you're talking too loudly, you can turn that down. And then what you're really going to want to mess with is turning down your desktop audio. This should stay fairly low as your game audio is going to very easily overpower your voice. You don't want that. So you will have to do, since you don't have a live audio preview, unless you do like a little test stream to yourself, you're going to have to do some trial and error to try to see what your audio levels are at and just, you know, get it to a sweet spot and save it there. That way you don't end up overpowering your voice because you don't want to be deep into a stream and notice that your stream viewers are saying, hey, your volume is too loud. If they are, you can just come sit here and turn it, keep turning it down and find the right spot. But you're going to want to do some testing to figure out where that is. And unfortunately, that may even depend per game. That's just kind of how it goes. Next to this, you have your controls to start and stop streaming and recording. Down here at the bottom, it will tell you how long you've been streaming or recording and how much processor power you're using. So if you're up in the 80s, 70s, 80s, or 90s, you're probably using too much power and your computer's probably making your live stream or recording lag. Over here on the left, you have your scenes and sources. Sources are your various video inputs and overlays and things like that, such as your video capture card, your image overlays, your webcam, your desktop, etc. Scenes are collections of those sources. So if you have a scene set up with your webcam overlay on top of your gameplay, that's a scene. And you're going to want to set up multiple scenes to put together a decent live stream that is entertaining for your viewers and has some variety. Alright, to get started, we're going to delete this empty scene here by clicking the minus button. Yes. And we're going to click the plus button to add a new one. This one's going to be called Stream Starting. Okay. Now this is just going to be a still image to put up when I'm first setting up my live stream to tell people that the stream's starting in a minute, but not show my webcam or my screens in case I'm showing passwords or something like that. And so to add that image, which is already pre-created by my designer Blizzard Ball, uh, you can find his link to his DeviantArt and stuff like that in the description below. I did a whole video talking about making these things. Um, check that out in the playlist as well. Go ahead and click plus in your sources and add image. We're going to call this start stream click ok and then we're gonna find it and mine is up under some funky folder here so we're gonna go find this channel projects it's actually under the hitbox folder starting soon png doesn't matter for full screen images if they're png bmp or jpeg because they're not they don't need a transparent background but for overlays which we'll cover in a second you'll need a transparent background Right click your image and go to transform and fit to screen just to make sure it looks nice and full. We're going to do another scene here. Click plus and call it BRB. We're going to click plus under the source, image, burb one. And we're going to do the same thing for the B right back screen. Okay. And then you'll notice here there is a box here. 
It says unload image when not showing. Now this essentially keeps the image out of system memory when your scene is not up. You may want to do this if keeping it in your, you know, if not having this checked causes your system to lag, if you don't have a lot of RAM memory in your computer, or if you're storing the images on a network hard drive like I am, you want to keep it in memory because if you lose connection to that network hard drive, when you switch back to the scene, it'll either not show the image or it'll take a minute to actually show it, which you don't want that little hiccup. So I'm going to uncheck that and then right click, transform, fit to screen. Same thing on the start stream one, I'm actually going to uncheck that box as well. Alright, next we're going to set up a desktop scene. Just a plain desktop. So I'm going to click plus again. I'm going to call this desktop. And in this version of OBS, it's actually called display capture. So when I go to add a source, it's called display capture. So I'm going to add that and call it desktop one. And then it's automatically picking up my 4K monitor here, but that's not the one I want. So it has this box right here, which lets you choose which monitor you want. So I'm going to choose that 1440p one I talked about earlier. And then it's automatically fitted to the screen for me. But if not, we can change that in a second. And then capture cursor or not capture cursor. Depending on what you're doing, you may not want to capture your cursor. For me, I do. So click OK. And then if it's too big, you can use the little red box here. If you click it, the red box to change the size, move it around, or right-click, transform, fit to screen. Now this is where if you have a 4x3 monitor or a 16x10 monitor, you can right-click, go to transform, and actually hit stretch to screen, and it will stretch it to fill up the whole screen without having black bars. For most uses, other than something like maybe Five Nights at Freddy's, this will make it look very, very bad. You generally don't want to do this. However, in certain situations like Five Nights at Freddy's, you can do that and it might look okay. All right, let's do a webcam. A webcam is actually a video capture device. So we're gonna add a scene. We'll call it webcam daddy, and then add a source. And instead we're gonna go to video capture device. And we're gonna call it webcam. And then it's gonna pop up an option to choose our video capture device. You may have a bunch here, you may only have one, you may only have a couple. Mine is my Logitech webcam. Now with this, you can choose your custom resolution up to what your webcam supports. By instead of having device default, you can choose custom. And then I'm going to go up to 1920 by 1080, and it's going to match the frame rate to what it can to my live stream. And then I can transform, fit to screen, and I have a full webcam view. Something to keep in mind here is that you cannot change your webcam resolution here and then have it be something else in another scene. For your entire scene collection here, the webcam resolution has to be the same or it's gonna change it across all your scenes. All right, so let's make a face cam scene. So I'm gonna make a new scene, desktop with face cam. Actually, we're not gonna make it a desktop with face cam. So I'm gonna remove that scene with the minus button, click plus again, game, game face cam. We're gonna add our webcam again by going to plus video capture device, but instead of creating a new one, we're gonna click and add existing and choose our webcam. Next, we're going to hit plus and go to game capture. And then we'll just call this game capture. And this works differently than it did in previous versions of OBS. Instead of having to choose whatever game you want, you can actually tell it to just capture any full screen application. So as soon as your game goes full screen, it'll catch it and show it to your stream. Now, this may or may not work for you depending on the compatibility of your game. You may have some issues where your game only shows a black screen or something like that. So you're going to want to test that. Check your video stream preview, etc. and figure that out. If it's not working, then you can uncheck that and actually manually choose your game. I'm going to leave it checked for now. And then go down here and actually choose whether or not you want your cursor captured. Keep that in mind. If you want your cursor uncaptured, you can uncheck that. And click OK. Now, I don't actually have a game running, so this isn't going to show anything. So I'm under my sources here, I'm going to click this little eyeball icon to turn that off so you don't see it. And then I'm going to go ahead and add another desktop capture for the sake of this video. So display capture, add existing, desktop one. All right, now you see that uh, my game, or my desktop here, is over top of my webcam. So here if I choose webcam and use these arrows, I can move it up and down. So I'll move the webcam up on top of this. And then I can use this red box here to change the size and position of it and just drag it over here. Now I have face cam set up. And then if you want to add an overlay for face cam, what you can do is add, an, add that as an image. Now an overlay image needs to be a PNG file with a transparent background. You can talk to a designer like Blizzard Ball or someone else to make one for you, or you can make it yourself in a free program such as GIMP or 
paint.net, or even Photoshop. However, keep in mind it needs a transparent background and to be safe as PNG. So we're going to go add image. We'll go call it overlay. Click OK. Find our image, which is that one's in my Dropbox. And then uncheck unload image and then transform, oh, transform fit to screen. And then we'll adjust our webcam here to fit within our overlay. So that way it looks nice and good as a face cam with our overlay. And boom, now we have a web, webcam face cam overlay stuff. And you can do that with all sorts of images and things like that. Or you will notice because of a setting I chose by adding my webcam, it actually added a webcam audio slider. If you're using a webcam or a microphone that isn't your webcam, you're actually going to just want to turn that down. That way you're not getting an echo or not having two of you talking. So that's going to be the same thing in my webcam only scene. You just want that in your mixer turned all the way down so nobody has to hear it. All right, lastly, we're going to add a capture card. I'm going to use my Live Gamer Extreme from Aver Media as an example here. So I'm going to go to add new scene. I'm going to call it LGX. Click OK. And then add video capture device. AVLGX for my Live Gamer Extreme. And then instead of my webcam, we're going to choose Aver Media Video Capture. Now by default, since it says it's using the device default resolution, it's like, whoa, what up? You don't got anything going through it. But I have another monitor I'm looking at here running through it. So I'm going to go to Custom Resolution, set it to 1080p, and click OK. And there we go. It has my other monitor here. And you can see my OBS, OBS Crazy Preview. And then any other time you want to add that source, go to Add, Video Capture, and then you can add existing and add that. You can add a couple other different things here. You have a text source you can add. You can just add new text. So we'll create new text, and then you can type something out. Shout out to Epos Vox FTW. And then you can change the font. You can tell it whether or not you want it to read from a file. That's how some of the plugins work for displaying what song is playing or your top donators or something like that. So you can tell that and then browse and find the file. You can change the colors of your text, add an outline, etc. And then if we add that over top of here, then we have a big old text that we can display over top of our stream. Obviously, you'll want to change the font size so that it doesn't look all pixelated, but it works. Pretty freaking cool. If you want to add specific windows to capture instead of just the display, the entire monitor itself, you can add a source of window capture and then choose a window that you want to stream. So for example, I could use explorer.exe. Well, that doesn't like Explorer. Okay, that's fine. We can use Windows Store, which isn't even open. It's gonna show a lot of stuff that isn't even necessarily open and that can be kind of a pain. So we use Core Temp here. There we go. So my temperature monitor. For a lot of window capture stuff, unless you're using it like in a tutorial fashion, you don't want capture or capture cursor on and then I can add, for whatever reason, if I wanted this window over top of my stream, I can add it there. And it cuts off the title bar, but shows the contents of the window. So everybody can look at my computer speed and how hot it is, etc. Pretty cool. You can add overlays or uh, overlays for like follower alerts and things like that using plugins like SubAlert or what I like to use, which is Twitch Alerts, Twitch Alerts, but it only works with Twitch. Um, but keep in mind that that is, or but those are a bit more advanced, and I may cover them more in depth in other tutorials. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching my OBS multi-platform YouTube gaming in a nutshell tutorial. This is, of course, one of my longer tutorials. I've done tutorials for this for both Twitch and Hitbox as well. Links to those will be in the description below and in the OBS multi-platform playlist. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Come check out our Patreon campaign, our Twitch channel. Subscribe to our other YouTube channels, things like that. And I will catch you in the next video.